So guys, once again, if you can, please subscribe to the channel. And also I'd appreciate it if you can smash the like button on this video as it will help the algorithms and push this video to newer audiences. So once again, I'd appreciate it if you can just smash that like button for me, please. So guys, in this next news story, we've got some footage which shows an army corporal around a nightclub before leading her to his home to do the word that begins with R, strangle and urinate on her during a terrifying attack. Sam Evans, a 29-year-old who was a commando in the Royal Artillery Regiments, carried out what was described as a prolonged ordeal that had destroyed the life of his victim, a young woman he met on the dating app, Tinder. He was sentenced to 14 years in custody and four years on license at Plymouth Crown Court after the victim gave an account of the impact the attack had on her. The court heard the defendant had met the victim on Tinder and they had exchanged messages but had not met until the early hours of that day. Evans took the victim back to his flat, ordered her to take down her jeans and underwear and went on to utterly humiliate her. She was choked until she could hardly breathe in what the judge described as an utterly savage attack and the stuff of nightmares. Officer said he engineered her return to his house while she was intoxicated and vulnerable having lost a mobile phone, all under the pretense of getting her home safely. When the victim became separated from friends, she was approached outside by Evans who had called a taxi. He immediately wanted to go to his house but she insisted on going to North Hill Bar to meet her friends arriving at around 4 o'clock in the morning. After an hour, she wanted to go home and a concerned friend took her to a nearby taxi drunk. Evans followed and assured the friend he would get her home safely by sharing the taxi. Instead, Mr Evans asked the driver to take him to Devonport around 4 miles from the victim's home. They stopped at a garage a short walk from his flat so they both could use the cash point. Evans paid the driver and then told him to leave. During the journey, the victim realised that she had lost a mobile phone and on arrival at Devonport she had no idea where she was. CCTV footage showed the woman clearly unsteady on her feet and being led by Evans to his home. After the attack, the victim asked him to call her a taxi but again he refused, instead offering to drive her home. She agrees as she felt she had no choice and wanted the ordeal to end after being there for four and a half hours. She went to Derryford Hospital that day as she was in terrible pain and disclosed the ordeal to staff who then called police. She was treated for multiple injuries to the jaw, significant bruising to her chest, bruising to her arms and neck and cuts and bruises to her mouth. At around 2 o'clock on Thursday, the 7th of July 2022, early morning, officers stopped Evans's van on the A38 at Glyn Vaddy and arrested him on suspicion of the word beginning with R. Jailing him, Judge Robert Limford said the defendant and his victim had by pure chance bumped into each other during a night out. He addressed Evans, the judge did, and he said, The two of you found yourself back at your flat. You produced a vibrator and she told you not to get any ideas. That was a message you should have heeded and you did not. Instead, you started to touch her over her clothing. She said you had got the wrong idea about her and you ignored this sign and laughed at her. The judge outlined how the defendant forced his fingers inside her and squeezed her throat so hard that she could not breathe. He said she was then slapped repeatedly around the face and ordered to remove her clothing. The judge added you then utterly degraded and humiliated her by urinating on her. He said Evans then put his penis inside of her and this time urinated in her. When she screamed, he then put a pillow cover over her and told her to be quiet before he spat in her face and put the vibrator inside her. The judge told Evans, your life continued with no more than a hangover but hers was utterly devastated. Everyone who knows a sober, hard-working you knows a gentle, kind, considerate man but that is incomprehensible when set alongside what she did that night through a combination of alcohol and sheer violent lust. It was utterly savage attack, the stuff of nightmares. He said the victim was left utterly humiliated and said the attack was sustained over many hours while she was under your domination and control. Giving evidence, the woman said she remembered little from the night until she came round on her bed and feared she would never leave alive. In a victim impact statement, she outlined how she was gagged, spat on, urinated on and sexually assaulted while she felt trapped in his flat. 
She said she went out for what should have been a normal evening with her friends as a normal, positive and happy young woman. But she added that version of myself never came home. She said she came around and she was confused, unable to move and began to panic about what would happen. She added I was locked in and had no phone to call for help. I was trapped with a man who was all but a stranger. She said she felt completely helpless and alone and felt no one would come and save her. She goes, I was not strong enough to save myself. She said, I cried and begged for it to stop, but I was taunted and laughed at. I was trapped in a permanent state of fear. The victim said she also lost consciousness as she was strangled. She said, I thought I was dying. I thought about my family and how I would never see them again. I did not know I would ever leave the room alive or if my body would be found as no one knew where I was. She said, I felt detached from my body. I felt like I had lost my identity. She said she has since found it difficult to eat and has been hospitalised with malnourishment and has not been able to work since it happened. She told the court this incident altered how I trust and perceive people. I've lost my faith in humanity. It has had a huge physical impact on me and my day-to-day -day living. I am not sleeping properly and when I do, I have nightmares. At my lowest points I felt life was not worth living anymore. I have lived in fear in my own home. Sam Evans has done irreparable damage to my life. At this time, I cannot see a way to move forward. Despite all of this, I have tried to make sense of it all. I have always had unanswered questions as to why he did this to me. I have tried to conclude on the morning of the attack. He was physically stronger, but I have the type of strength and self-respect he could never understand. Evans was described as a man of previous good character who had no convictions and had an impeccable military career. The judge said he had displayed genuine remorse for what he had done and had written a letter to the judge with an apology for his victim. Uh, they've started talking, and this was months before anything had happened between them. So on the, on the night this has happened, she's been at a nightclub in the Barbican where she has already told him that she likes to go to. It's, it's been agreed that, the, that they, they met on the Barbican uh, close to the taxi rank. Um, he has recognised her and started a conversation with her. Um, he wants to take her immediately back to his house. Based on that conversation that they've had months ago and two minutes of meeting him on the Barbican, his idea is that they go back to his house straight away. She says she's meeting some friends up on North Hill and that's where they go. They've had more drinks and then she's lost her mobile phone. At that point, she's ready to go home and he tells her that he will share a taxi with her. But it doesn't occur to her that she's in any trouble at all at this point. She's got somebody who's willing to share the taxi fare home with her. She's got somebody who's already spoken to a friend of hers and said, don't worry, mate, I'll get her home safe. She hasn't asked him where he lives because she doesn't think she needs to because she thinks she's going home. So the victim now is in a place she doesn't know with no phone, no access to her friends, her family, or to call the police. And her choices have now diminished to, I, I have to go with this man, he said he's going to get me home safely. So because she doesn't think she's in any trouble, because she has trusted a stranger, and he is a stranger, the CCTV that shows him leading her by the hand back to his flat. She doesn't know she's in any trouble at this point. And it's then that he turns and only then that she realises that she's in trouble. So once inside the flat, he then says he's calling the phone and he says he can hear it somewhere in the flat vibrating. And he keeps trying to reassure her that it's in the flat somewhere and they'll find it later and, and that she should just lay on the bed and rest. So she does this, she keeps asking the phone, he keeps 
saying he's calling it and say you can hear it vibrating, but the phone was never there. He then subjected her to a brutal and sustained attack over several hours where he would sexually assault her. He would pin her down, kneeling on her chest. She has injuries that support this. While sexually assaulting her, he would also strangle her to a point where she would lose consciousness. Once she regained consciousness, he would give her a break and then start again. And he would continue the cycle over and over, the cycle of fear that she was in. She said at any one time she thought she was about to die. And um, she's also said in her statement to the police that he told her she was very lucky there were other people in the flat at the time or it could have got worse. So from that, she believed the only thing worse than what was happening was death. The strength she showed and the bravery and her motivation for supporting the prosecution is to, in her words, she doesn't want anyone else to go through what she has gone through. So if she can highlight the what happens if you do come forward and are brave, she said that's all she wanted to do is to show other people that if you do come forward, you will be believed and you will be supported. I've never come across anything as severe as this case. Um, I believe it's the, one of the worst cases of this kind that Devon and Cornwall Police has ever had to deal with. Throughout, he has never shown any remorse, has never made any admissions. I think the level of free meditation he showed leading up to the incident, what he did on the night, how he manipulated someone very vulnerable through alcohol into gaining his trust, lying about the mobile phone, making her think the phone was in the flat, then making sure he knew where she lived by taking her home was done to intimidate her and keep her in fear. And I believe because of that, he is a very dangerous individual. It seemed very clear he um, is leading a double life. The impeccable serviceman who is well liked and well respected by his peers. And then this other side to him where he's using the dating app to prey on vulnerable females as was the case with this victim. I think for me, there are no winners. Um, something horrific has happened to the victim and, and she will live with that. Um, her family will have to live with what's happened to her. I think Mr. Evans has lost his liberty because of it and his family and friends will suffer because of that. There are no winners but there is justice and there is some comfort in that. So guys this is a new story coming in. Absolute madness guys. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.